better way. This year's budget is fuelled by robust economic growth. Confidence has stayed high, investment has flooded in, and at the moment our economy is in rude good health. But there's $1.7 billion of net debt, doubling to nearly $3.5 billion over the forward estimates. This is record debt. It is $3.5 billion over the forward estimates and it's going to cost Tasmanian taxpayers about $300 million over the forward estimates to pay, just for the servicing costs. Peter Gutwin has decided to keep the budget in deficit for an extra year, choosing to put more money into health and put aside $300 million in case of a COVID outbreak. That means the net operating deficit will reach nearly $700 million this financial year, before reaching a $40 million surplus in 2023-24. If you take away the one-off Commonwealth grants, it's a different picture. Tasmania's budget won't be back in the black in the next four years. But in terms of the, um, the cash position, next year we return to a cash surplus and we're in an operating surplus in the third and fourth years of this budget. This budget assumes Tasmanians will keep spending, but that could be undone by coronavirus. GST is Tasmania's largest single source of revenue at 40%. Last year, households across the country kept spending throughout lockdowns, partly because there was plenty of Commonwealth COVID support payments and stimulus. There's less of that support now, and this budget doesn't factor in the impacts of the current New South Wales and Victoria COVID lockdowns. Treasury says that poses a risk to Tasmania's GST receipts. There's also a raft of other potential risks, including blowouts in health spending, claims from abuse survivors and the possible cost of a second undersea power cable. This isn't a bad budget, but what we're seeing here is catch up after eight years of underinvesting in health and education, housing and community services. Hydro Tasmania's dividend to the government is expected to plunge as cheaper electricity slashes its revenue. The government will try to offset that by leaning on its traditional cash cow, the Motor Accidents Insurance Board. Laura Beavis, ABC News.